The sea, an environment full of life and at the same time very fragile, has to be protected and preserved every day. Because everyday human pressures can challenge its delicate balance. Ninety percent of the global transport of goods is carried by sea. Around 50,000 merchant ships sail the oceans of the world corresponding to a total dead weight of about 600 million tons. When the ship is traveling without cargo or with only a partial load, it must acquire additional weight on board to maintain stability and operate safely. This additional material is called ballast. The vessels charge and discharge ballast water to improve the trim during the operations of loading or unloading of goods. The waters are generally taken inshore or in port and, once the ship arrives at its destination, are discharged. In ballast waters, there are both sediments and organisms, bacteria, algae, small invertebrates, eggs and larvae, which can then be introduced into a new environment, the receptor port or neighboring waters. It is estimated that, globally, ships transfer 3 to 5 billion tons of ballast water per year. In the ballast tanks of ships around the world, there can be up to 7,000 different aquatic species. The introduction of organisms to new environments through ballast water of ships is a major threat to the health of the oceans. The possible consequences are environmental, economic and health-related. Introduced species can compete with negative species for food and space, can feed on native species, alter habitats, alter hydrographic conditions and the food web, even replace native species. They can thus reduce biodiversity. Possible economic impacts are related to the proliferation of encrusting species, biofouling, on the hulls or on coastal infrastructure. Also, aquaculture, fisheries and tourism can be negatively impacted. For example, the comb jelly Nemiopsis legi, a native species of the Atlantic Ocean, was introduced in the early 80s in the Black Sea through ballast water and in less than 10 years has caused the collapse of the anchovy fishing industry. Nemiopsis is a voracious predator of fish eggs and larvae. Impacts on human health can also occur caused by the proliferation of toxic algal species or venomous species and by the presence of pathogens. There is evidence that the epidemics of cholera along the Peruvian coast in the early 90s are to be associated with discharges of ballast water. With the expansion of the world trade and an increasing number of ships moving between international ports, the transfer of pathogenic microorganisms could represent a particularly insidious threat. There is one main international response to prevent, minimize and ultimately eliminate the risks to the environment, human health, property and resources arising from the transfer of harmful aquatic organisms and pathogens through ballast waters. 
It is the International Convention for the Control and Management of Ballast Water and Sediments of Ships. The Ballast Water Convention was signed in London in 2004 at the IMO, the International Maritime Organization of the United Nations. The convention is now nearing entry into force. The Maritime Organization started with this issue in early uh, 1990s, uh, prepared in 1990 some guidelines and actually in 2004 international convention uh, uh, for ballast water management uh, and management of sediments was adopted in uh, London. Uh, this is now the uh, main international instrument which however at this point didn't yet enter into force uh, but is uh, very close and uh, we actually hope that we'll enter in 2016 or at latest uh, 2017. As the ballast water issue is very complex, the implementation of the Ballast Water Management Convention is far from being simple. The Adriatic Sea is a unique and highly sensitive sub-basin. The economic and social development of its coastal states strongly depends on a clean and preserved Adriatic. The Adriatic is a seaway mainly used by international shipping transporting goods to or from Europe as hinterland, with also intense local shipping. The Adriatic Sea presents morphological and hydrographic characteristics that then make this area very different from the rest of the Mediterranean Sea. It is a highly productive system, one of the richest basins in the Mediterranean and introduced species may find here particularly favorable conditions for reproduction and therefore further spreading. The introduction of harmful aquatic organisms and pathogens, or HAOP, through ships' ballast waters is an increasingly serious concern. The volume of ballast waters discharged in Adriatic ports is over 10 million tons per year and due to foreseen projects, this number could soon increase considerably. In Europe, the monetary impact of non-indigenous species is estimated to exceed 12 billion euros annually, and more than 955 non-indigenous species are recorded in the Mediterranean Sea, the highest number of all European seas. Adriatic countries recognize that the ballast water issue is very critical and complex, and that a key barrier is the lack of data and knowledge to enable Adriatic countries to fulfill the requirements of the Ballast Water Management Convention through a common strategy and a common management plan. And based on this idea, the Project BALMAS was born. The Project BALMAS, Ballast Water Management System for Adriatic Sea Protection, is aimed at finding practical solutions to the ballast water management in the Adriatic Sea. It involves 16 partners from six countries bordering the Adriatic Sea. Italy, Slovenia, Croatia, Montenegro, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Albania. A strategic common cross-border approach has been recognized to be crucial because of the shared, specific, vulnerable, economically important semi-enclosed environment in which managing of harmful aquatic organisms and pathogens as well as international shipping cannot be limited by political borders. The project integrates all the necessary activities to enable a long-term, environmentally efficient and financially sustainable implementation of ballast water management measures in the Adriatic. Lack of data and knowledge in the Adriatic has been fulfilled by the numerous activities carried out. One of such activities is the Biological Baseline Survey in ports. For the first time, all the main Adriatic ports have been investigated with respect to the presence and abundance of non-indigenous species and harmful native species in their waters and sediments. And a common protocol for investigation has been drafted and tested. 
The main goal related to baseline, biological baseline survey in the ports is uh, make a list of uh, native and foreign introduced and invasive species that are existing in the ports. We aim to facilitate monitoring of uh, new introductions. Some exceptionally valuable data have been collected. For example, the first record of Didismosphenia geminata in the port of Venice. Didismosphenia is a diatom species. It produces nuisance growths in fresh waters, mainly rivers and streams. It is native to the northern hemisphere and considered an invasive species in Australia, Argentina, New Zealand and Chile. The species produces large amounts of stock material to form thick brown mats on stream bottoms. It threatens habitat integrity, biodiversity and recreational opportunities but does not pose significant risks to human health. A species which can indeed cause serious risks to human health is Alexandrium minitum, a dinoflagellate found in many Adriatic ports in Venice, Ancona, Bari, Trieste, Schibenik, Split. Alexandrium minitum is a red tide species and producer of paralytic shellfish poisoning toxins. Its presence has been reported over a very large geographical area, including the Mediterranean Sea. We took the sediments um, more, more or less in the places where the ballast waters are discharged. We analyzed uh, the dinoflagellate cysts in the sediment. So uh, the dinoflagellate cysts are really small organisms in the size range of 20 or to 80 micrometers. So this is very important to, to have an, um, an overview which species are, of dinoflagellate cysts are present in the sediment. A non-indigenous copepod, Pseudiaptomus marinus, was found in the ports of Venice, Trieste and Coper. Pseudodioptomus marinus is an Asian egg-carrying species, first described from samples collected along the west coast of Japan, now present in the Pacific and Indian Ocean. In 2007 and 2009, it was firstly detected in the Adriatic Sea, near Rimini and Trieste Monfalcone, but was not considered an established species. However, it was collected in 2008 in Sicily and from 2010 in France as well. Our findings suggest that this non-indigenous species is now established in the northern Adriatic. Its environmental impact so far is unknown. Uh, we are collaborating with numerous partners from the Adriatic Sea, so from the western and eastern coast. This is a um, fruitful collaboration because um, only in this way we can have a clear picture of uh, all the species that uh, are present in the Adriatic and that, that may represent a risk for the different ports. And uh, also in this way we can share information about um, the possible new emergent uh, toxic phytoplankton species and future intoxications. People from local communities can also help to detect the introduction of non-indigenous species. So the information that uh, we gain uh, in, in this way, uh, it's like, um, it's a very valuable information because it's like the first, first hand encounter of those species, those people who are living in, on the sea and they are spending every day with the sea, they are like the best observers of the sea life. Empirical evidences indicate that many pest species are rarely first detected by scientists, but more often by fishermen, marine farmers, dive clubs and local communities for sea recreational activities. For this reason, in order to maximize our ability to detect newly introduced potentially harmful species, Balmas has also involved local communities, especially professional and sportive fishermen, in the process of data collection. This participatory approach, often indicated as Local Ecological Knowledge, LEK, is being used not only to track the potential introduction of non-indigenous species, but also to generate awareness among the stakeholders. 
In the last decades, LEK has emerged as an alternative information source on species presence or qualitative and quantitative indices of species abundance. It can be defined as the information that a group of people have about local ecosystems. Based on previous experiences made at the Mediterranean level by the Mediterranean Science Commission, researchers performed interviews with local communities, represented mostly by fishermen, but also divers and other sea users. Semi-structured questionnaires have been conceived around the main question. Have you seen a new species never seen before? Interviews can be performed to fishermen at the ports, but information will concern also surrounding areas. It is important to involve local people in monitoring programs because they are everywhere and all the time and they can provide the earliest detection. Results allow to gather information that otherwise cannot be obtained and this is expected to generate synergies with awareness initiatives and with the structure of the BALMAS early warning system. But not only the biology in ports has been investigated. Another pioneering activity of BALMAS is the assessment of chemical compounds in port environments that can be associated with ballast waters treatment technologies. Ballast waters can also contain chemical substances that are hazardous for the marine ecosystems. Our interests concern the products of disinfection for the treatment of ballast water and anti-fouling paints used in the tanks of ships. Ballast water management systems make use of active substances on board in order to minimize the transfer of harmful aquatic organisms and pathogens. The majority of the traditional biocides are oxidant agents that, reacting with the organic matter in seawater, produce disinfection byproducts which are likely to be toxic to the aquatic environment. In the database developed by the IMO GESAMP, Ballast Water Working Group, chemicals most commonly associated with the treated ballast water are haloacetic acids, trihalomethanes, haloacetonitriles. Moreover, there is a clear potential to discharge through ballast waters other chemical products, including organotins compounds into the sea. It was demonstrated that the vector of worldwide transportation of TBT is not limited to hull and other exterior portions of ships, but also ballast water may act as a vector of much greater capacity and contribute to the rebuildup of TBT contamination in estuaries, international seaports and coastal regions. We have analyzed water and the sediments, and for analysis of biota, we use the methodology of Muscle Watch. This considers the transplantation of mussels from uncontaminated areas to the investigation sites. In order to assess chemical contamination in selected ports of the Adriatic Sea, a baseline survey based on the active Muscle Watch activity, supported by water and sediment analysis, has been carried out. Seven ports have been chosen for the investigation. Bari, Ancona, Rijeka, Dures, Koper, Split and Bar. So far, very few ships have ballast water treatment systems installed on board worldwide and none of the ships investigated in Balmas had treatment systems on board. This enabled us to truly assess the chemical baseline in our ports with respect to ballast water associated compounds.
subsequent monitoring will verify if there will be a buildup in the concentration of such substances once the IMO convention enters into force and ships are required to have ballast water treatment systems on board. In Balmas, uh, we uh, are also uh, reviewing uh, this field and searching this field and we are aware of uh, more than 120 producers worldwide uh, for ballast water management systems or treatment systems to be installed on board vessels and uh, at this point uh, 57 of them already got type approved means that some technologies are available to be installed on vessels and used actually to prevent this transfer. Balmas activities were also directed to investigate taxonomic composition and abundance of organisms found directly in the ballast water of ships. Ten ships in each of the 12 selected Adriatic ports have been sampled. A common protocol for sampling and analysis has been selected and tested by participating partners. Project uh, focus uh, for in a protocol for all the partners and for analysis, uh, the analysis um, Mm, regarding community of zooplankton and phytoplankton immediately, not for identification of species and the genus, but for testing the vitality of organisms and uh, pathogens and bacteria. The work on the protocol itself is particularly important since at the moment there are no standardized internationally recognized protocols for such investigations. For this reason, the IMO called for a trial period of two to three years before agreeing on approved methodological protocols to be used for port state control purposes. For each ship that was sampled, information on origin and amount of ballast water was gathered, and an indicative analysis was performed on board. The indicative analysis is needed to rapidly verify whether the abundance of a group of organisms greatly exceed the maximum concentration allowed to be discharged according to the IMO convention. Such tests are to be considered for port state control operations when the IMO convention will enter into force. Further, more detailed analysis were carried out in the lab after the sampling on board to check for viability of phytoplankton, zooplankton, and indicator microbes. For phytoplankton and zooplankton, we also investigated the taxonomic composition and abundance of each species. The taxonomic analysis allowed us to identify the presence of non-native species or harmful arriving in Adriatic ports and their origin. One of the main goals of Balmas is to develop and test an early warning system uh, for ships to prevent them to uptake ballast waters in critical biological condition. Um, this is also envisaged by the IMO Convention in Regulation uh, C2 and uh, the UNEP MAP Mediterranean Regional Strategy on um, ships ballast water management. Such early warning system uh, would be extremely useful also for uh, warning environmental authorities of the presence of a non-indigenous uh, species. Uh, so this could help in the implementation of the European Marine Strategy Framework Directive. 
Um, so what we are trying to do uh, here in Balmas is uh, to make sure that the chain of communication that we are trying to, to develop as information system uh, could occur in a timely and effective ma manner. Uh, so we are identifying the, the various steps and the various authors that have to be involved in this chain of communication. The first step is the detection step and uh, we've been talking about uh, um, monitoring baseline surveys and monitoring imports so we need to acquire uh, information on the biological conditions of port waters and addition waters. Um, we need to supply this monitoring information with surveillance activities so that the early warning system could indeed be early, uh, as early as needed. Um, and then we need to develop the, a warning service and uh, consider eventual response capabilities uh, that are going to be different response actions that are going to be different uh, depending on the emergency case that we are considering. An assessment of the risk of bioinvasion is needed in order to grant exemptions to ships from managing ballast waters or, at the contrary, to request additional measures according to the Ballast Water Management Convention. In Balmas, a review of risk assessment approaches and methods for ballast water management around the world was conducted, and risk assessment decision support system models for selective ballast water management options were developed and tested. The models took into consideration shipping patterns, quantity and origin of ballast water discharges, and sediments, disposals, and local legislation. We also know that there is a relative shortage of the solution for this kind of trade. Uh, therefore, the port baseline studies and the risk assessment, which has been developed in the scope of this project, could facilitate the implementation of the convention and application on short sea shipping, including the implementation of the exemptions, standards and procedures to this kind of trade. A ballast water management decision support system model was prepared and tested by integrating all available management options for vessels and ports. The early warning system, the risk assessment DSS, and compliance monitoring and enforcement DSS. The BALMAS DSS will support a common Adriatic cross-border decision-making and the implementation of ballast water management and control measures according to the IMO Convention. Coast Guard is uh, the national competent authority for uh, the maritime traffic monitoring activities. Uh, it manages the vessel traffic and management information system, VTMIS, and uh, all the vessel traffic centers. Among the several tasks of the Coast Guard, some are particularly relevant for the upcoming implementation of the IMO Ballast Water Convention. Surveillance activities for harmful aquatic organisms and pathogens species in ports and adjacent waters are going to be carried out by the local maritime authorities as well as support in carrying out sampling and remedial actions if and when needed. Control activities are going to be carried out by port state control officers on board of ships once the convention enters into force to verify whether the ballast water discharge is in compliance with the standard set by the IMO Ballast Water Management Convention. The Italian Coast Guard in Bomas is in charge of developing and testing a cross-border electronic Adriatic BWM decision support system. This system is useful for all Adriatic competent authorities and for the project partners.
The information system will enable the fast reporting of the ballast water management information provided by the ships sailing in the Adriatic Sea. The system will also allow to have shared information among the competent authorities and maritime stakeholders. The Italian Coast Guard headquarters will host and manage the ballast water management decision support system used by its harbor offices as well as by all the Adriatic maritime and environmental competent authorities. From the policy point of view, the Balmas project wants to respond to a core question. What Adriatic states would need in order to properly implement the global standards set by the international maritime community? This apparently simple question raises a number of critical issues. Firstly, we should consider that huge private shipping investments are certainly needed in order to comply with the Ballast Water Management Convention requirements. But preparation is at the heart of the public sector's response as well, and many technical aspects of the convention go beyond the sole shipping world, as they are related to environmental knowledge. On the other hand, we should keep in mind the peculiar features of the Adriatic Sea, where sensitiveness of the marine environment goes together with very relevant issues of the sea actually based on the quality of marine environment, such as fisheries and tourism. These sea uses actually represent important sources of income and jobs for coastal nations and whether both states and the commercial and shipping communities weren't able to properly implement the global rules these economies might be exposed to an important danger. The Balmas project wanted to address how different public competences, mainly environment and shipping, might contribute in the long term to a sound and sustainable ballast water management in the Adriatic Sea. To this end, we foresaw a so-called strategy for the implementation of the project deliverables providing specific recommendations, suggesting available options, and underlining existing opportunities uh, offered by the actual uh, legal framework. This strategy will address is the need to implement the convention coherently in the basin in order to facilitate that national measures are taken in a way as much uniform as possible. The strategy addresses also the need to put in place those public actions that would devise an effective compliance, monitoring and enforcement system supported by proper education and training. And last but not least, the strategy takes into consideration the financial sustainability of these public actions as an essential component for an effective national implementation of global standards. Balmas project enables also a long-term partnership of the biological institutes across the Adriatic Sea and maritime authorities, which will last longer than this project to improve the environment of Adriatic Sea.